Hi everyone, welcome back to Pretty Well. Dr. Angela here with you. So sorry we missed you guys last week. It was my turn to record some footage for you guys, upload a video, and we had crazy wildfires here in Southern California. And then I was evacuated from my office for three days. And then I had some crazy allergies flare up as a side effect of all that extra particulate matter that I got exposed to. So sorry we missed you last week, but it definitely inspired me to make a video about air pollution for you guys. Um, the fires are definitely a situation where we have an acute reminder of particulate matter and air particles, air pollution that our bodies are dealing with because the volume of air pollution is so extreme when we're exposed to fires. But really, this is an ongoing phenomenon that most of us have to deal with if we live in urban areas. And there are definitely things we can do to protect ourselves, to lower exposure to harmful air particulate and um, things that if we've been exposed to air particulate we can do to help our body deal with that burden and help our bodies heal. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Many of you guys did get a chance last year to watch the video that Dr. Patty put out on detoxing our lungs and taking good care of our lungs that she put out after last year's fires that we were dealing with. And so there's a lot of great information that Dr. Patty talked about specific to um, herbs that help the lungs and things like nasal irrigation that really help get uh, particles out of our sinuses. So definitely check out that video if you missed it last year. I'll link it here as well so it's easy for you guys to find. You guys can always use the search bar as well if you're trying to get through all of our videos because there's over 100 now and you want to get to a topic quickly, you can type the, the keywords that you're looking for in any videos we've done related to those topics will come up and definitely always check out the description boxes as well as sometimes we have afterthoughts um, when we've made a video for you guys and so we'll tuck some extra information that we think might be helpful for you um, if there's products that you're looking for maybe it's the first time you've heard of an herb we spell things out in the description box and let you know where you can find things so always check that out so in this video looking at air pollution in general the big take home around why we need to be really thinking about minimizing our exposure to air pollution is that most of the compounds that are floating around in the air really uh, generate a lot of oxidative damage in our bodies. And some of us know what that means and some of us don't. When we have reactive oxygen species um, that are released in our body, this accelerates the rate of damage of our cells. So certainly locally in our lungs, the first uh, contact, the first tissues that would be coming into contact with those particulates that we're pulling in, but then really systemically in our body. And there are a lot of chronic illnesses that we have data on that are related to how much exposure we have to these particulates in the air. We know that in general, it increases inflammation in the system. You can actually measure on blood an increase in C-reactive protein. Some of the blood markers that show us that more inflammation is happening in the body when we've had higher exposures to these particulate molecules in the air that cause oxidative damage in our body. It damages our mitochondria. Many of you guys know those as little energy generating factories inside of each cell that make our ATP. So that gives the body more energy to do all the things it's supposed to do properly, including heal, including do the, you know, the jobs efficiently of each particular cell. So we really want to protect the mitochondria. We now know that having damaged mitochondria and killing off our mitochondria is definitely associated with an increase in all chronic illnesses. So we really want to take great care of the mitochondria. And we're going to talk about how to do that at the end of this video when we talk about treatment for this issue. But just understanding that inhaling all of these volatile particles in the air, our, our mitochondria really take a hit. We definitely see increased um, risks of cancers, autoimmune diseases, definitely allergies, um, 
we see uh, increases in things like Alzheimer's. So we know because we've talked about this in many other videos previously that any time we have a chronic inflammatory process going on, there are many other chronic illnesses that are associated with those um, inflammatory conditions like cancers, like cognitive changes, like Alzheimer's, like heart disease. So those are all really relevant here. So what are things that we can do to protect ourselves from these air particles um, that are so abundant in our environment these days? Well, if we have the luxury and there's any possibility to choose housing that would not be directly next to a freeway directly next to a highly industrialized area where a lot of smog is being generated locally, that's always desirable. Sometimes due to our family situations, our economic situations, we can't choose to move to a physically cleaner environment. In that situation, we would want to think about things like um, installing air filters throughout the house. They do have air filters that are whole house air filters. That's definitely a great thing to do if there's budget for that. If there's not budget for that, um, putting air filters in each room in the house or at least the rooms that are the most um, inhabited. So um, bedrooms, definitely we spend a lot of time in the bedroom and we spend a lot of time in the kitchen. And they do have different ratings on different air filters. And so the filtering of, filter rating of over seven on the scale, and I'll put that information in the description box for you guys, um, are more helpful with removing the particulates from the environment. There's an old, um, you know thing culturally and many of us still do this in our houses where when we come into our house we remove our shoes some of us even change our clothing and have different clothing that we wear in the house versus you know outdoors um and this is an older world kind of thing to take off your shoes many asian cultures do this before entering the house or just leaving them at the door of the house and there is actually good science to this we definitely track in a lot of environmental toxins when we're outside and bring them into the house and by taking off your shoes and potentially even your clothes when you're first coming home that is definitely a way of decreasing the load that we're then going to be recirculating and breathing inside the home um, if it is a particularly bad day, like if things like fires have happened um, or there's a reason why all of a sudden the air quality is very bad, um, you know, wearing air masks is actually a way to protect ourselves. I know some of us feel goofy doing it, but you know, last year when we had the fires happening locally, I remember layers of soot and ash being on top of the tables nearby in the cafes and on top of the cars and we're breathing all of that in. So. Don't be shy to wear goofy looking air masks if it's gonna protect your lungs during a transient situation like that. So minimizing particles going in, definitely the best thing we can do if possible. If we can't do that or we've done that but we still have had some exposure, the very next thing we wanna think about is increasing our antioxidants because the way these um, molecules in the air damage our body is to set off oxidative stress and oxidative damage. Glutathione, if we had to pick just one, glutathione is hands down the best one to go for most immediately. Um, glutathione is not always um, well absorbed orally and so taking liposomal forms of glutathione can really help get cellular levels of glutathione up. Uh, the other thing you can do is take nutrients that are precursors to glutathione. So just really load your cells up with things like NAC that we've talked about before. We can link those videos as well so you have access to that. Um, many of the amino acids are going to help us make more glutathione and I'll put all of that information for you guys in the description box. Um, other antioxidants as well, because even though glutathione is an antioxidant and it really protects the lungs and it is also very helpful in detox pathways, which we're gonna to get to next, there are other antioxidants that are gonna be helpful and help us recycle our glutathione levels um, so it can keep doing work for us inside the body. So those are things like vitamin C, vitamin E, selenium, alpha lipoic acid, resveratrol, um, green tea. There's a lot of things we can take and I'll list those 
in the description box. Many of you guys take them already because you're already mindful to take antioxidants. We're aware of the impact that oxidative stress has on aging. And so many of us who are growing up do take things like CoQ10 proactively, you know, all of these ones that I've mentioned. But this is helpful in immediately quenching those free radicals that are off the hook and causing damage. The other thing we want to do is really support our detox pathways. Um, so again, I'm going to list these things in the description box for you. Many of the antioxidants we just mentioned are also helpful for our phase one and phase two liver detox pathways. Um, having adequate levels of amino acids are really going to be helpful. So whether they're plant-based or animal protein based, just making sure we're getting an, uh, adequate amino acids um, via straight amino acid or protein intake. Um, things like MSM can be very helpful. So sulfur based things, glutathione is very rich in sulfur. So is MSM very helpful. Um, your B vitamins as well. These are all great detox pathway helpers. And then the fourth strategy for kind of the acute shutdown of symptoms that happen, you know, many of you will notice like I did last week, if you have just a huge exposure to uh, air pollution, you might notice that your allergies get really bad and or if you're already prone to um, other inflammatory issues in the body. If you suffer from autoimmune illnesses that cause inflammation, things like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or um, Sjogren's, anything like that, you might notice a flare up in symptoms. So supporting those detox pathways to help you minimize that inflammation and then reaching for natural anti-inflammatories would be very appropriate in this situation and natural antihistamines. My go-tos typically are things like nettles and quercetin they work very well and very quickly i was definitely double dosing last week for a few days um, magnesium our old standby is also very helpful it can be very nice before sleep um, some of you are familiar with an enzyme called dao dao that's another natural antihistamine that can be used and also you know these are you know areas where again the natural anti-inflammatories things like fish oils so all of our essential fatty acid helpers or vitamin D, things like that, that would all be very helpful in turning down the symptoms of inflammation that can really act up when we've been exposed to um, a large kind of noxious situation of increased air pollution. So that's what I have for you guys on air pollution and protecting yourselves. Definitely trying to minimize exposures whenever possible and then doing everything we need to do to do damage cleanup um, on the back end if we've been exposed. I hope this really helps you. Please share this information with anyone who's acutely suffering from air pollution um, issues that have been ramped up, but then also, you know, the mindfulness that all of us on this planet, we have a lot of environmental pollution at this point, and we um, definitely need to keep doing our part to be thoughtful about lowering emissions and lowering uh, the amount of circulating toxins that we're all exposed to. So, you know, continuing to do our work in that direction and not losing sight of it because it's not always obvious. We will see you back here next week. Thank you so much for being with us and being part of the community. Take wonderful care, keep your comments coming, your questions coming, and we will do our best to cover everything we can for you. Stay well, stay healthy. See you back here next week. Thanks so much.